Hey, good afternoon, everyone. My name is John Geminot, Regional Vice President of Sales here at Angel Oak Mortgage Solutions. Uh, we're going to get started here in about two minutes, maybe a minute and a half. Uh, let everyone start logging in. Uh, we look forward today. We're going to do a deep product dive into our bank statement program. Uh, and, you know, it's our most popular program. It's almost 60% of our business. And uh, uh, we look forward to, I'll introduce our two subject matter experts here in about a minute and 15 seconds, and we'll get started there. So a lot of people logging in. I don't know if any of you have been on these calls before. I'm actually playing a little way game here, so I could be a little discombobulated <laughs> a little here. And if, you know, technology messes up, we'll, we'll run with it. So let's have fun. Hopefully teach you a lot about bank statements. Uh, we're going to go over, we're going to do, a, we're going to launch with a poll question, not yet, but we're going to launch with a poll question, cover the highlights of both of our bank statement programs, uh, talk to you about what we like on a 1003 and what we don't like on a 1003. We're going to talk about dive into the credit, what we, what we look for on credit. And then we're going to teach you, some, we're going to show you some great tools we have, like our quick quote tool, how to submit a prequal. And then we're going to finish strong with our marketing because I think our marketing portal is the best in the industry. And we're going to show you how to grow your business, not just close bank statement loans, but how to find those self-employed borrowers. So got about another 30 seconds and we'll get started here. A lot of people still logging in. Give it about another 10 seconds. Okay, great. Again, my name is John Geminod, Regional VP of Sales here at Angel Oak Mortgage Solutions. I'd like to introduce our subject matter experts today. Al, introduce yourself and just give us a brief background, please. <clears throat> Thanks, John. My name is Al Wooten. I've been with Angel Oak about three years now. Uh, my background is primarily wholesale, and I left the conforming world and came to non-QM uh, because as an account executive, I think it's a great product, and it gives me something of value to bring to you. Yeah, thank you, Al. And then, of course, if you've got seen this, Annie's always on these webinars. Annie, please introduce yourself. Hi, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you're at in this country. But um, I'm super excited to teach you all about bank statements today. I have been with Angel Oak since 2015, and I've probably closed over 500 of these loans. So there is a question you guys can't answer that we probably won't be able to answer today. So I'm super excited to get started. Yeah, thank you, Annie. And and that's true. The, you know, the experience of, of account executives here just at Angel Oak. Annie, what have you been eight, nine years now? Yeah, yeah, eight, nine years. In fact, last week Larry and I did a, a conference in Utah. And between us we had 18 years of Angel Oak experience. So thank you, nine, Al Free. Guys, experience in closing these loans is the most important thing to getting your loan closed. So before we dive into our bank statement loan, we're gonna do a poll. And we're going to launch this poll is, hold on, again, I'm playing this away game. Who has originated a bank statement loan for a self-employed bar in the last 12 months? And while you're voting on this, I want to share a little bit of information. So in 2020, new business applications grew over 2019 by over 24%. It was the largest increase in new business applications in over 10 years. In 2021, new business applications grew by 22% over 2020. This is the largest, fastest growing segment of, of the workforce that we have today, and they're all self-employed borrowers. So there's more self-employed borrowers than there are VA borrowers. So I'll stop talking and let's look at it. So 70% of you on this call have not originated a bank statement loan in the last 12 months. So that's why you're here. That's why we have these two subject matter experts. So we're going to teach you today everything you need to know, everything that Annie and Al know already about closing a bank statement loan. So Annie, let's jump right into it and talk about our bank statement elite program. I'll bring up the program Perfect. here. Thank you, Annie. Awesome. So while I jump into the Bank Statement Elite program, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to give an overview of the Bank Statement program as a whole before we dive into this one specifically. So what I love about this program is there are no tax returns required. So no tax returns, if they haven't filed taxes, if they haven't paid taxes, if they owe taxes, there is no way you're going to find out about that. 
Qualifying the borrower is going to be based off the average deposits that are flowing through their bank accounts over a 12 to 24 month period. And that's how we're going to come up with their income. Now, I get asked this all the time, especially with the majority of you guys, you know, 70% of you have not done this in 12 months. So how do we calculate the income? You know, um, a lot of you guys, the very first time we're working with you, you're really nervous about that. So the good news is, and we're going to cover this later in the process when we go over the pre calls, is we're going to do the income calculation for you. But the most important thing for you guys to know right now is when we start working with the bank statement borrower is always collect 12 or 24 months of their personal and their business statements. And the reason why I say both is we can determine, we can use either personal or business when calculating their income. And sometimes their cash flows will be different between the accounts. And our goal is to find the account that has the most amount of cash flow when it comes to qualifying. So I always tell everybody, get us both, get us personal and business accounts. Now, when it comes to using the business account to qualify, we are going to look at all the deposits over the past 12, 24 months. And what we're going to do is we're going to apply an expense factor because obviously every business has expenses to it. So when we're applying the expense factor, we're going to send over the business questionnaire during the pre-call stage, and we're going to find out information about this business. We're going to find out what type of business it is, how many locations, how many employees does he have, so we can know the expenses. I would say on average, 80% of the time, we're using about a 50% expense qualification, and that gives us plenty of income to qualify. Now, if we do need to use a little bit more, we can go up to use um, 85% of the deposits, and if it's a large business, then we go down and use somewhere around 30% of the deposits. That will be determined during the pre qual of your account executive. So once we have determined that business income, then we're solid and we're good to go. Now, let's say the borrower also has a personal account where they're transferring funds from that business to that personal account. Then we can use 100% of those funds going from the business into the personal account if we have two months of the business account to show we can see the expenses coming out of that business. So sometimes it does give our borrower a higher buying power to use 100% of the deposits going into that personal account. Now, let's say maybe they're 1099 or they work a sales job and they only have a personal account set up. Then what we would do is we would use that personal account and we would do the exact same thing we do for the business account. So we would go through, do the business questionnaire and apply the correct expense ratio. So we treat the personal account as a business account. So that's a good overview of how we're going to go through and calculate the income on the bank statement program. And when you work with your account executive one-on-one -on -one during the pre-call process, we'll get a lot more in depth. And especially when that pre-call is issued, you will know that final income. Now, jumping into our bank statement only program, this is a program that we launched at the end of last year, and we really wanted to create a program. A lot of these borrowers we see on the bank statement loans, they're high, super high credit scores, super low LPVs, no bankruptcies, no foreclosures, whatever. They are solid borrowers. They have just not had this opportunity to get the home that they are looking for yet. So this program was really created to service the needs of these borrowers and give them the best rate out there. So, for example, there is no bankruptcies, no foreclosures. We can go up to a $3 million loan amount um, at 75% LTV with a 680 credit score. Depending on our LTV, at the lower LTV, we can do a 40-50 DTI. And then at the higher LTVs, we do limit that DTI to a 40-45 DTI. But what's also great is still six months reserves, which is on our normal program. And... Um, and then also two years self-employed. So I get a lot of the questions because we do ask for 12 months bank statements. We still have to have them self-employed for two years. And if we're using the business account, they just need to own a minimum of 50% of the business. If we're doing the personal account, they need to own a minimum of 25% of the business. So really think of the elite program um, when we're working with a borrower and they have those pristine credit scores. We do look at things like payment shock. Payment shock cannot be um, going over. 350 percent uh, and then this program we cannot make any type of exceptions on so um, for those of you who have worked with us in the past you're very familiar we make a lot of exceptions on our loans but this one is no exception so if they don't qualify for this one then we just take them on our standard program yeah so i just before we jump into our regular bank statement program just a housekeeping rule this is being recorded we will get this out to you before end of day tomorrow and if we don't get to, we have always get a lot of great questions just to give people, you know, some uh, 
what we've been doing since September of 2020, we've been doing these webinars every month to educate, you know, the, the lending industry. So again, this is being recorded. We will get this out to you before end of day tomorrow. And if we do get to a question where we don't have time to answer, we will have your account executive reach out to you no later than tomorrow morning. So just wanted to do that before we get to, because we already have questions coming in. We're going to get to the Q&A right after we talk about what we want on a 1003 and what we want to look at for credit. So bear with us. We're going to get to your questions, I promise you. So especially Bradley, you asked the first question here. So we're going to get to that question, I promise you, Bradley. So Al, let's talk about, I know Annie said elite is, you know, there's really no exceptions there. I'll talk about some of the highlights that our bank statement program, our regular, what we call regular internally, but it's our bank statement program and give us some of the difference, differences between elite and the regular. Absolutely. So just, just to add to you know, the spirit of the program, the bank statement loan, it just gives you a way more accurate uh, window into self-employed borrowers uh, income than tax returns do. Um, anyone that's been looking at a self-employed income analysis, the Fannie Mae form for, for years, once you see this, you'll see the difference. Uh, the key to the program is <laughs> Uh, getting the right income and qualifying self-employed borrowers for a home they can actually afford. Uh, it better serves the borrower, your realtors, and uh, you know it can make you the go-to loan officer for self-employed borrowers, which is a large market, as we've mentioned. Uh, we do offer loans up to $3 million with a minimum of one fifty. dollars um, You're going to quickly find that self-employed borrowers often have higher incomes than do W-2 borrowers, and the loan sizes tend to match. Uh, we use either 12 or 24 months bank statements. These are all similar to the Bank Statement Elite program. Um, as far as some credit, uh, we do we do allow two-year seasoning on foreclosure, short sales, housing uh, events, uh, which we'll get into when I talk about credit. Uh, the rates are 30-year fixed. Uh, they're slightly higher than conventional, uh, but if you haven't tried one yet, you'll you'll, or if you haven't tried to sell one yet, you'll find that uh, self-employed borrowers already understand that the money that they save on their tax write-offs far outweigh a little bit of paying more interest on a mortgage. Uh, so they already, a lot of them already get it. Um, there's no there's no mortgage insurance on any non-QM program, which also helps bring that payment uh, more more in line. Uh, you know, there are there is two-year self-employment, which is the same as a, a conventional loan. So, you know, the time required in, of business ownership is the same. What's different is is, is just how we're calculating the income. Uh, this product allows for the purchase, the rate and term, and then even cash out refinances. Uh, and a lot of non-QM programs also allow delayed financing. Uh, this uh, this loan works for it works for owner-occupied second homes. Uh, owner occupied, um, or I'm sorry, not owner occupied. So, why would an investment property borrower use this loan instead of our DSCR investment property loan? It's simple because the rate's better. If you've got somebody that that's that's that rate sensitive, we're everything that we do is about giving you options and keeping your toolbox full. Um, so, you know, you have the options to keep you covered. There is a 1099 option that, that Annie's going to talk about. Um, the 1099 borrower and the bank statement borrower have one thing in common. It's how they do their taxes. So that's why we put these loans together because they're both done in a, incomes figured out in a very similar fashion. And the idea is accuracy, qualifying a borrower for what they can afford, which, uh, which equals ends up equaling buying power. Buying power means that if you're buying a house you can afford, it's probably gonna be a larger house bigger loans for you, more more loans for your, more more sales for your realtors. Uh, most most loans will qualify at an expense, an expense factor, just like 50%, um, which Annie touched on with the other program. Um, and then if the business costs, a le costs less to run, like if they're selling, uh, if they sell on Amazon, for example, um, we only require a statement from a CPA stating what the cost to run that business is. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Al, thank you. I, I appreciate that. So, you know, a couple of things that I want to bring up. Bradley asked the first question. I'm going to, we're going to get Bradley's question answered here, Annie. Annie, why would you tell a broker or why would a broker tell a borrower, give me 12 or 24 months? Give us some examples 
on why we would maybe only use 12 in addition to the pricing difference too. Mm -hmm. So as you just mentioned, a lot of the times it can come down to pricing, but sometimes we do see some self-employed borrowers where their businesses do depend on seasonal income. And so the longer we can see that seasonal income come through, then the easier it comes to qualify so we can have an understanding about the bigger picture of their business. So sometimes it's also because of the type of business that they do run and being able to understand their income. Yeah. And then, you know, you, you know, I mentioned some of those statistics about how new business applications have grown a lot in the last two and a half to three years. And maybe they just started their business. And in the last mm -hmm. most recent 12 months, you know, they're really killing it. And we'll drop months 13 to 14 to get that higher income that Al's alluded to a couple of times that, hey, we'll increase their purchasing power two, three, four, five times because we're going to use the last 12 months. Or even as Al mentioned before, you know, it's that self-employed borrower that's, you know, buying those luxury homes. It's not mostly your W-2 buyers, uh, buyers. So, all right, let's get into Annie. Cover uh, some highlights of what that 10, what you like to see on a 1003 and give us some, you know, some of the, the tips and tricks of that helps you mm -hmm. AE do a prequal faster for a loan officer. Perfect. So when you put together your 1003 for the bank statement borrower, it is going to be very similar as you are doing conventional loan. We need to see a complete 1003. The more information you provide us, the easier it is for us to give you answers when we're doing that pre -qual. So for example, we need to have a complete two year history when it comes to their housing. If they're renting, we need to have that rent amount on the 1003. We do look at payment shock and we do need to verify their housing history for 12 months. So it's very important that you do give us that figure. Now, probably the most important thing on the 1003 is when you put down their employer, the name of their company, how long they've owned it, what their position is, they're probably going to be an owner, is leave that income field blank. We do not want to see an income figure in that field. And the reason why is we are going to be calculating the, the income on that, and when it uploads into our portal group through underwriting, it'll stay blank for that entire process. So, and also we do a lot of exceptions on our loan. So it's easier when we do the exception to have that income field blank. So go ahead and leave that blank because we're going to be determining that income throughout the pre qual process. Now, another area that's very important is the assets. We need to see all the assets that the borrower has, especially if we're going to be asking for an exception. Assets always play a vital role in requesting that exception. And then REO. REO is very important. When the loans come in for underwriting, we always pull a loan safe. So we're going to see everything that's titled underneath that borrower. So anything that could be titled under their personal name needs to be on the REO section because we're going to find out about it. And the worst thing that could happen, especially when we go into underwriting, is to have new debts and liabilities pop up that we don't know about that could hurt that DTI. So that really needs to be talked about during the break wall process. And then also most importantly is the subject property information. So I always want to review the subject properties, make sure, okay, what is the condition of the property? Will it pass our underwriting guidelines? But more importantly, if it's still a TDD, that's okay. In fact, we prefer to have these loans come in during the pre-fall process when it is a TDD property, so that way we can make sure the borrower is fully qualified when they go under contract. And the moment they go under contract, you can let us know, send us the address, and then you can go through the portal and order the disclosures right away, so we don't lose any time. So it's still a very hot marketplace out there. You know, I'm covering territories from Atlanta to Seattle to Utah. And we're still very competitive markets where people are needing to close in 30 days. You do not need to waste, you know, two to three days doing a pre-qual and that should have been done ahead of time. So very important to send these to us uh, being TDDs. Yeah, you know, and Annie, you bring up some great points there. You know, the pre-qual, you know, I have always used that expression. It's your calling card, right? You know, Al, <laughs> and Annie, and all of our account executives across the country, they take really, really, really great pride in doing great pre-calls. They pre-underwrite that file for you. So the, the more you can help them, and you've heard Annie say, you know, we get exceptions, probably 30% of the loans we close mm -hmm. don't meet our guidelines. So what helps Annie and Al and all our other great account executives get exceptions are those assets, right? All the, the, yep. the, the great information from that, that, that 1003, that loan application helps us in addition to credit. And while we're talking about credit, Al, Take us to what you're looking for on a credit report 
and just kind of go through some of the characteristics of trade lines and, and, and help everyone out here on what you're looking for as an account executive. Well, it's 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 pretty basic, John. Uh, credit means the borrower has two open trade lines that are open and active for 24 months, or they have three that are open and active for 12. Uh, from here, the in-the-door score is 660. If you've got a 660, we'll take it from there. When I talk about the price engine, mm -hmm. give you a little bit a better idea of of you know how you can find out what you can qualify your for your with for your bar for your borrower with from there. Uh, you you. You see, you're, you see all kinds of scenarios uh, when, you know, people, they self-employed people, square pegs, round holes sometimes. This is when you pick up the phone and you call me or you call the AE in your region because being the expert at non-QM is what we do all day. We talk, I talk to people all day long about, you know, the, the different, you know, different types of scenarios. So, you know, start with us. Um, outside of calling us, the best first step to see if your borrower fits the program is to use the price engine, which we'll go over today. Um, mm -hmm. We allow two years seasoning on a foreclosure, short sale, bankruptcy, or deed in lieu. This is just another competitive edge. Uh, if you're thinking about, you know, where does non-QM fit into my business lineup, uh, it's just think about it like the product that picks up where the where the agency and Gavi stuff leaves off. Yeah. Yeah, you know what, and I don't know if I used it on the uh, uh, when we went over the poll, but there are more self-employed people than there are VA borrowers. Mm -hmm. so when you think about the opportunity out there, it, it's it's really really huge. And and Al, a couple other things I wanted to add to the credit. You know, we do part of, of us getting exceptions are, you know, if you need a 720 score for a 90 percent, and guess what, you have a 715 or a 714, and everything else looks great on the credit. We're going to get that approval to that exception up front. Annie and Al and all the other account mm -hmm. executives can go to our help desk and say, hey, can we use this? Yes, we get an exception based on that score, based on the other characteristics of that borrower. And that's going to follow that all the way through underwriting. It's not underwriters going to get this and say, well, wait, this doesn't qualify. It is done. Everything's done up front. So not to waste your time, put your referral source in jeopardy or anything like that. So Okay, now the fun part, we're gonna to get to the Q&A as I promised. So, um, Annie, I need you, you went yeah. over, you talked a little bit about personal and business bank statements. James needs a little clarification here. Could you use 100% of the, when can you use 100% of the personal bank statements income? Okay, perfect question. So we can use 100% when the borrower has a business account and we can see two months on that business account and we can see the expenses coming out of that business account. So we know the expenses are being accounted for. Then with the personal account, we can take 100% of the deposits. So we can take all the transfers coming in from their business account. If they have counter deposits at the bank, we can use 100% of those. Now there are still some types of deposits we will back out, like any Venmo accounts or PayPal or anything like that. We will block those out but you will know that all during the pre fall process. Yeah, and again, this is being recorded. We will get this out to you before end of day tomorrow. Uh, Rob, yeah, I know we answered your question through the queue, but we're doing a DSCR. We're, we're gonna do our debt service coverage ratio webinar on June 8th at the same time as uh, at, at noon central time, one o'clock Eastern time, whatever time zone you're in. So we're doing that June 8th. We will have our debt service coverage ratio deep dive. Rob, join us for that. Thank you. Um, Al, talk about, we got a couple other questions here. What if a borrower is W-2 or their spouse is W-2? Can you still do a bank statement program for a self-employed borrower? Absolutely. If you have you know, an easy example, you've got a self-employed contractor married to a school teacher. She's W-2, he's self-employed, she's not on the business. Send the bank statements for him, send the W-2 for her. We use both both of those incomes. There is one income that can be added on top of bank statement income, and that's non-taxable. So, like, if they get Social Security, you can add the Social Security on. And I've been really surprised over the last couple of years how many borrowers I've seen that retire, create a business, have had the business for two years. So they'll consult or whatever they're doing, and then they'll have Social Security on top of it. The Social Security can save the day on the payment on the uh, ratio. Yeah. And, and thanks, Al. You know, everyone, everyone's into the 
big AI, artificial intelligence, right? We have real intelligence here. I go RI. <laughs> We've got experienced account executives that know their stuff. I'm telling you, there's not, maybe there might be a couple scenarios out there, but the, the, de the knowledge database that we have of real intelligence is, is, is second to none in the industry. So, uh, Andy, a couple of questions about ratios. Give us our, what we get on the front end and on the back end. And mm -hmm. Perfect. Ratios with us are super easy. It's always going to be 40% on the front end no matter what. Um, on most of the stuff, we're going to go up to 50% on the back end unless we're doing the elite program and we're maxing out our LTV, then we're going to back that down to 45%. It's super easy. Most of the time, think of it 40, 50%. Yeah. So, Al, you might have to look at your matrix here. So, I know I mentioned 72090 score. Give us just some of the other iterations of scores and buckets and stuff like that just to share with the audience, please. Well, you're, you're, I don't have the matrix in front of me, but you're in the door at a, at a 660 FICO. Um, 660 is going to get you in the 70 to 75 range. Uh, you're going to go to 680, which will get you into the 80 range, 700. And this is depending on whether you're doing the bank statement elite or the regular bank statement program, because it can vary. Um, you're going to a seven you're going to a 90 ltv which is where it finishes that with a 720 fico yeah and i'm I, I, sorry I'll, i've got i do have mine in front of me so on elite yeah. 660 like you said gets you in the door right mm -hmm. so um and then there's different iterations 720 85s you know uh or 720 for 90 sorry 700 for 85 and 660 mm -hmm. for 80 so and again depending on, on loan amounts any i know we briefly Al touched a little earlier on delayed financing. Talk talk how that works, because there are stuff, a lot of pockets around this country that are still really hot, and people say, mm -hmm. you know what, I can't wait the 30 days, I, I've got to pay cash. Yeah, no, this is a great program. So the benefits of this program, it's going to give you the LTVs as if we were doing a purchase. So if they qualify for 90%, then we can go up to 90%, and technically it's a cash out in the sense because we're going to be giving them those funds back, but the pricing will be as we are doing a rate term. So they do not get that cash out hit. So we can do this up for six months. If they paid cash for the property, we can go up to six months. We just have to verify during underwriting that the cash came 100% from our borrowers. If it's a hard money loan that they took out, then we have up to three months to pay off that hard money loan. So great program. I actually see these a fair amount. Um, because yeah, it's a hot market still. So people are moving quick and paying cash and utilizing hard money. I, 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 thank you, Annie. I love our our participants here. They they all, you know, and seventy percent of you have not closed a bank statement loan in the last twelve months, which is great because some of the questions we're getting are really, really, really good questions. So thank mm -hmm. you for coming, Al. This is going to blur the lines. Condo tells. Do we? I I know we don't do them on bank statements, but we do now do them on. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, the DSCR, John. We'll do condo tells. Um, uh, you, you'll you'll notice that with you know we've moved into the you know to the Airbnb world. Uh, short term rentals. All it takes to turn a condo into a condo tell, condo tell is a concierge desk, which right. there's nothing to put in in the lobby. So you've got a condo tell. We've got a program. Yep. So Danielle, hopefully that answers your question regarding. Condo tells we do them on our debt service coverage ratio program, not on bank statements yet. So, you know, everything continues to evolve. That's why, as Al mentioned, you know, reaching out to your account executive is your first line of defense. Absolutely, always. Uh, Annie, talk about cash out on bank statements. Specifically, Doug's asking about an investment property and does it have to be occupied? Ah, great question, Doug. So, Cash out on the bank statement program is very popular right now. I would say that's half the bank statement loans I'm doing right now because these self-employed borrowers are really maximizing equities in their properties to have assets. Um, but yes, we can do them on investment properties. Do they have to be occupied? Yes, they do have to be occupied. Now, I have done cash out refinances on investment properties that are being used for a short-term rental, and that is okay, but we do have to see it furnished. We do have to see the ad online that it is a short-term rental as well, but we will not lend on a bank of property for investment. Now, Danielle's into the Q&A now, so we've got another question for you, Al, from Danielle regarding, does bank statement loans allow gifts? 
Yes, you can get a gift on a bank statement loan as long as you have 5%, the borrower has 5% of their own money into the transaction plus six months reserves for PITI. Everything beyond that can be, uh, can be a gift. Yeah, thank you. Um, and he talked about payment. James is asking about payment shock. Uh, is there a requirement for already being a homeowner? And kind of go through the different iterations of our yeah. payment shock. Yeah, so we definitely look at payment shock on these loans. Um, if they are a first-time home buyer, then we will allow payment shock up to 350%. If they are not a first-time home buyer, then we do allow up to 40, 450%. And we do make exceptions on these. So it really just depends on the borrower scenario as a whole. You know, do they have a history of having a higher mortgage in the past? Have they paid higher rent in the past? Reserves, that's always a big one. LCV, that's always a big one as well. Now, if they happen to own their primary free and clear, which we do see uh, from time to time, then we do not look at payment shock. And so payment shock is really only looked at on a primary purchase. So if they're doing an investment property, we really don't look at payment shock as close and same with the second home. Yeah, great. Uh, you know, we're at 30 minutes past the top of the hour. I do want to leave time for a lot of the great tools. So we're still answering some questions behind the scenes. So keep those questions coming through the queue. And he's going to cover a little bit of our 1099 and then uh let me hold on again playing with uh, where did i go here Annie? hold on there perfect. we go sorry about that perfect Let me cover so, our 1099 program please perfect so we get questions all the time do 1099 borrowers count and yes they do count because they are technically self-employed you know, as Al mentioned earlier, it all depends on how they do their taxes. And these 10 million borrowers definitely take advantage of the tax codes out there for them. So a lot of the times we see these types of borrowers are real estate agents. So for those of you who are looking to go out and market, reach out to your real estate agents. Let them know we have a loan for you. A lot of them utilize tax returns. So, and then, you know, a lot of these are 100% commission. So they're working in insurance sales. They're doing basically any type of sales where they could be making um, commissions. A lot of these borrowers, you're going to see that they are only going to have a personal set of bank statements. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you know, even if they only have a personal set of bank statements, the minimum we're going to do is a 15% expense factor with that CPA or account letter. So really utilizing this 1099 program is going to allow them to use 100%. Um, actually, no, I take that back up to 85%. <laughs> Sorry about that. But um, this is great because it really allows you just to collect less information from that borrower. So we can do either a one-year 1099 or we can do two. So we can either collect um, 2022 or 2022 plus 2021. And if their payroll is being provided by, let's say, a national payroll provider, so um, like um, an ADP, then we can use a year-to-date of their pay stubs to see what they have made year-to-date. If they do not have like a national payroll provider, then what we can do is we can get a copy of their personal state statements to look at those year-to-date to see that those, they're still making the same level of income that we are seeing on the 1099s. So, but what's wonderful is they still get the same LTVs, the same qualification as the bank statement loan. There's just less income to qualify. So, you know, this program is really beneficial, especially when we start the beginning of the year, especially the first three months. Um, that's when I tend to see a majority of the bank statement or the 1099 borrowers come through because by that, during that period of time, we're just collecting one 1099. As we progress through the year, usually they're making more money as the year continues on, and then it turns into a personal bank statement borrower. But this is also another great way to go. Um, I have seen loans come in for 1099 borrowers where they're having their income go across several different bank accounts, and we can only use one personal bank account to qualify. So even throughout the year, especially if they're spreading that income through multiple accounts, and let's get a look at that 1099 and get them qualify off of those 1099. Yeah, thank you, Annie. And you mentioned realtors, right? A lot of them at 1099. Well, 9% of the loans we close here at Angel Oak are for realtors. So not only your referral source, mm -hmm. you know, get out there and educate them. That's only 9%. That means the other 91% probably don't even know these programs exist. So, I mean, 70% of you haven't originated a, non, uh, a, um, a bank statement loan in the last 12 months. Imagine what your biggest referral source is 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 not aware of so keep can we it's up to angel look and us and we'll talk about this a little later when andy talks about the marketing portal about how we can continue to educate you know you you know your referral source and everyone in your sphere of influence so 
and, and Andy made me Andy made me think of a question that hasn't been asked here, Al, but I'm going to ask you: Can we do two different bank statements for the same borrower? No, we would have to use one bank statement for the same borrower for one business. We could if they had two businesses. So that that's 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 the exception. Um, it's pretty rare. I've had an exception basis where we did use two separate bank statements. I won't get into the details, but you know that goes along with us making exceptions. So it has happened, but for me only once. Yeah. So, but as Annie mentioned, you know, either get us, you know, two things we're going to do. We could calculate both if they're both businesses or a business and a personal. We'll go with the higher one, and if that qualifies, great. We're just with one. But I have seen. Uh, uh you know instances let's just say they own two two separate uh mm -hmm. dry cleanings right and and they're not co-mingling funds between the bank statements yeah we'll get that we'll get that deal done every day every day so and you know, and another sorry. thing to add in really quick is i i hear this all the time too is sometimes these borrowers have more complex businesses i just did a pre-qual for a guy who runs an asset management firm company and they have five different sets of business statements and so he gave what he thought would qualify to my lo and i told my lo i saw you know different accounts listed in the in the ledger being transferred into and i saw this one account standing out with a lot of transfers and i said this account won't work get me this account give me all of the accounts in fact and it was the account that the borrower thought that oh this isn't the best account but it turned out being the best account so if you do have that borrower and they do have multiple statements for each for their business get all of them let us review them our little expert eyes will know which one to use in five minutes yeah and how much does it cost for us to calculate the income for them annie nothing it's done <laughs> yep. for your benefit <laughs> <laughs> and, and now I'm going to do another PSA here, right? So public service announcement. If you know you are going to meet with a self-employed borrower, you, you know you're going to grab their tax returns, right? That's because we've all, you've all been conditioned to do that, right? But if you know you're going to meet with them up front, get their, get their bank statements, right? Don't wait until you're two weeks from closing and you finally got the bank statements calculated and oh my God, everyone's hair is on fire and now I have to go to bank statement route. So Go get them up front. We'll calculate the bank statements for you. As Annie and both Al mentioned, we'll do those on TBDs. So let's do it. Let's get it, get it done, and we'll get it done up front. Everything, that income that's calculated up front is used throughout the entire process. We have a team of experts that does it for you. As Annie mentioned, cost you zero. So a uh, lot of great questions still coming in. I know we're answering some of them behind the scenes. We want to be very respectful of everyone's time. So a couple of questions that had come in is, hey, Al's talked about this pricing engine. Where is it? How do I get to it? How do I submit a prequel? Well, guess what? Al's going to solve all those questions right now. So go ahead, Al. Thanks, John. Okay, I, I mentioned that this is a place to get started, and John's pulling it up right now. Um, once you get a price and you're ready to move forward, uh, this is where the this is also this is where you can price loans and this is where you can run a prequal. So you know, Andy mentioned us calculating your bank statements. This is where you're going to upload it. This is a secure site. You do not have to have a password to access this site, but it's a secure upload delivery and a pricing engine. So just John's pulling up a price. Yep. Give me a minute. So I'm playing a away game. I'm kind of handicapped here. So <laughs> that's all good. There you go. Okay, so basically we've got the Bank Statement Elite and the Bank Statement Program. The difference between the two is the Elite is obviously priced better. So when you're looking at qualifying your borrower, uh, it's going to come up, you know, different ways depending on the depending on the scenario, depending on your borrower. So sometimes the Bank Statement's going to make more sense. Sometimes the Bank Statement Elite's going to make more sense. Yeah, and, and 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 as Al mentioned, you know, Al and Annie are going to put your borrower in the best program that works for your borrower, right? You know, if they decide they have to go bank statement versus bank statement only, it's probably because there's maybe a credit event, or you know, maybe we couldn't get an exception on elite, and we can on on banks regular bank statements. So you know, and here are some of the parameters below here that 
excuse me, that will show you, you know, just some high level uh, information there. So, so let's say, Al, you've ran your scenario here. You've talked to Al. You say, hey, I want to submit. How do I submit the 1003, the credit report, and the bank statements to you, Al? It's easy, John. Pick a price. Now, when you're picking a price, you can pick par if you like. It doesn't matter. You're not locking the loan. Um, we're going to qualify it, and we're going to send you back the pre-qual with the price stack. So you're going to have everything there that's available on both BPC and LPC on a wholesale transaction. So when you go ahead and you pick your price, your price here closest to par, you select and select the option. And then this gives you the ability to drop in a 3-4 file. If you don't have your 3-4, that's fine. You can just click to next. Here's what the, the great thing. Okay, this is simple. You've got, you know, you pick your account executive. There's about seven and eight, seven or eight data points here. You're going to pick your account executive, your company, your uh, NMLS number, things like that. And then there's a drag and drop for, drop for documents. You see there's a red asterisk next to those documents. If there's a red asterisk, we need it. Um, so here, here's the, the key, the pre-qualification, you know, it's gonna look at the income, the credit up front, and it's gonna give you the answer in about a day in most cases. Um, it, the, the key to a solid pre-approval is obviously, uh, it's a complete application. We're gonna look at everything on that 1003 and we're gonna identify anything that's going to cause you a problem. That's what we're, what we're here to find upfront. Our goal is to, is to keep you, you know, you're using a product that you're maybe not familiar with. You have business, you have you know, realtors, you have borrowers, you have a reputation. You need someone that can keep you on track from the time, you know, th from the first phone call to the closing table. So that's what we do. The pre-qual is critical for that uh, because we're going to give you your income. It's going to be on a dated document. That document, you, it's just like your credit report or, or, your, uh, or your appraisal where you know that your income is good through a certain date. Uh, yeah, and, yeah, and Al, you mentioned it, you know, within 24 hours, you have a lot of, there were some questions here. How quick does it take to get a pre-qual? You know, we have a team that calculate, we've mentioned it a bunch of times, we have a team that calculates that income for you. And usually within 24 to 48 hours, if everything there, as Annie mentioned, uh, when she went through the 1003 application, if everything's completely filled out and you know there's no questions, yes, we can get them back in 24 hours. If there's a couple of other questions, it might take a little longer. But let me tell you, the time spent up front is critical to the rest of the process going as smooth as silk. So. Uh, you know, they might feel, you might feel like, oh my God, they're asking a lot of questions up front. Is this the way it happens? Well, no, they're asking questions. So nothing gets delayed from the time you request disclosures to you get your clear to close to we fund the loan for you as the broker relationship. Um, okay. Go ahead, Al, sorry. Yeah, it's, 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 it's the best way to, you know, to get in front of anything up front. And, you know, and if it takes, if it takes the borrower maybe a few months to find the property, you can send us new statements and we'll update the income calculation. Uh, we'll, and then we'll send that back to you again with a new expiration date on it. Um, I, I, and as far as you know, being here, seeing income changes, it usually only changes up or down a small percentage anyway. So you're pretty safe with that initial income qualification. So what you're getting back from us is good up front. Yeah, but Al, you mentioned it and it's a great point because you know there are some markets that it does take more than 60 days, 90 days to find mm -hmm. to find that house of their dreams, right? So let's face it, you know, you might get an income update and you might increase their purchasing power, or you know, let's find out where it is. And again, do this up front because it's just it helps solidify those relationships for you. So uh well, you know, we're about 15 minutes before the top of the hour. So uh, a lot of people, you know, we did a webinar last month, uh, last week, last month, felt like a month, but last week we did, you know, how do you find these borrowers? How do I market to them? And, you know, this is the, the greatest part about, um, you know, Angel Oak is we've got all these tools here for you. So I'm going to go back to the homepage, make sure. So so right. to do a prequal, you know, you, you don't have to have login credentials, but Annie, take me through how to get you know, to this marketing portal. Perfect. Okay. 
So the way that we're going to access the marketing portal is, okay, you're right at our TP portal login. So let's go ahead and log in right there. And so John's going to go ahead and log in. Now, for those of you on this call who do not have access to the portal, once we're off, reach out to your local AE, and they can send you over the broker user access form for you to complete, and then we can get you access within a couple of hours, so that way you can start utilizing these marketing. Um, marketing is very effective. Um, I have worked with multiple brokers across the board, you know, since 2015, and I have seen what work and what has not worked when it has come out there to do marketing. And I have seen brokers, you know, over the course of eight years, really build a solid reputation in doing non-QM loans. And a lot of it all started from then having an effective marketing base. So once you're locked in, then what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the marketing portal. So let's go ahead and select on that tab. And then let's go down to the flyers. So we have customizable flyers here for you guys all over our program. So they're simple, easy. All you have to do is click on the program, fill out your information. You can include your logo. You can include your photo. Then you go ahead, you hit save to see changes, and then you can download that flyer. So that way, if you're going out, you're doing real estate visits that day, or maybe you're doing an email program, these flyers are super effective to say, hey, this is what I'm doing. We can go ahead and get your name out there. So now let's go back. Hold on, Andy. I just want to add one thing. You know, once you fill yep. out this once for any of these flyers, it populates for all of the flyers we have here. And, and we have Spanish ones. As we scroll down, there's more Spanish. There's bank statements. There's CPAs. You know, so we have all that there for you. Sorry, and I just wanted to add that oh. little thing there. No problem. So now if we go back down in social media. So social media has really taken over as the primary marketing place these days. You know, when I first started out, a lot of my brokers, they were doing direct email campaigns, and they really had a great network. They would email to CPAs. They would find asset managers. Um, a great resource are loan officers that work at banks who don't have access to these types of loans. And they would ask for the referrals of the turndowns that they couldn't do and say, hey, I'll get them into this home. We'll let me do the purchase and then I'll pass them back to you. So that way they wouldn't have the feeling of their time to steal their, their um, customer long-term. And so, but now it has evolved. So now a lot of my brokers have evolved in doing a lot of social media posting. So these are flyers that you can download and you can upload through social media. The most that I see that have been effective has been LinkedIn and Instagram. And the type of marketing they're doing is they're marketing at least three to, you know, two to three times a week at minimum. They are doing, you know, posts like this where they're using these images, and then they're also doing video posts. They're sharing what they have access to. You know, I can do a bank statement loan. You know, one of my top brokers, we came out with our condo tell program. Now he is, you know, actively marketing on social media. He has access to be able to close condo tells. So, um, and he's licensed in Florida, and Florida is a big market for him. And we all know Florida has a lot of condo tells. So now he has been marketing condo tells at least two to three times a week through his network. And then another thing that he is doing that is very effective that I have seen is every time he closes a non-QM loan, he is telling the story about that non-QM loan. He is saying why the borrower did not qualify going the conventional route and then how they were able to qualify them in the closing time that it took going the non-QM route. So he is sharing and engaging with his audience, the programs he has access to, and then he's telling the stories to say these are successful. So he's always in front of them and he's always saying, I can do this and I'm closing them. So that way he gets a lot of referral through those channels. Um, so, so utilize social media. Um, yeah. Definitely build that network, you know, especially reach out, you know, connect, connect with realtors, connect with CPAs, asset managers, Thank you, Lowe's. Anybody you can think of that could come into contact with our borrowers, connect with them online. So now let's jump into one of my favorite things to talk about. Yeah, man, one other thing, I was at an industry event the other day, or it was the other night, it was a happy hour, and I was talking to a loan officer who was also a financial planner, CPA, and she focused, she focused more on the financial planning and the CPA part of her business, but I asked her, have you or the AE I was there with asked her, I won't take his credit. So the AE I was there with asked her, has she ever heard of a bank statement loan for a self-employed bar? She was also an originator. She had never, ever heard of that. So there's a lot of people like mm -hmm. CPAs, financial planners, 
your referral source, you know, um, let's go through every, every, you know, Eric Morganson, who's, you know, always out there. He says, how do you find self-employed bars? Open your front door. You will fall mm -hmm. over them, you know, so they're out there. Strip malls, anywhere you're going, those are self-employed borrowers. And if you go back to those statistics I mentioned earlier, it's the fastest growing segment of the workforce. So sorry, Annie, that's another PSA. So. <laughs> no, it's all, it's all very important. So, okay, let's scroll back up and then let's go down to presentations. Okay, so this is one of my funnest things to talk about because this really engages us with you and your realtors. So we have two different realtor presentations that you can download and you can also customize. So that way when you're going out there, you're meeting with realtors, you can really talk about these non-QMs. So, but what makes us even more powerful is we have AEs that are across the United States. So chances are we have an AE in your marketplace. And my favorite things to do outside of, you know, working with you guys one-on-one -on -one and giving you guys presentations is making you look good in front of realtors, going to presentations with you guys and presenting on behalf of realtors. And so a lot of what we do when I give this type of presentation, we don't do the data dump. We don't go into LTVs, we're gonna lose them. We tell them who our target borrower is, the self-employed borrowers, the investors, why we run into, why they can't get qualified conventional. Because think of it this way, a lot of the times the realtors, they may hear a few things come out of potential buyers, and then they go, oh, okay, I don't like hearing that. You may not qualify. I don't want to work with you. So we want to build that confidence. We want them to know, oh, okay, that's okay. Call so-and-so. I know he specializes in borrowers that fall into your category. He can get you qualified. And so a lot of it is I'm going to be telling stories that sell. And we're going to be telling about a lot of borrowers we work with and loans we have closed. Because we want to build that confidence in them for them to call you, knowing this loan is going to close. So, for example, you know, this is a great resource for you to utilize. You know, I was in Utah, and I'm going to be going back to Utah next month for a month, and half of my calendar is already filled out doing realtor presentations. Wow. And so, it's huge, it's powerful. You know, if you're not doing them in person, if you maybe are working with an office online, we can join you via Zoom, and that is not a problem. But let us be the experts on your behalf. You know, that's my biggest thing with the takeaway today is let us be the expert for you. Go out there, go fish, go cast the net, go find them and let us be the expert. You know, one of my most frustrating things is when I get on the phone with a broker and they've been, Andy, I've been on your website for 30 minutes. I need to know this. I can answer that question for you in two minutes. Save that 28 minutes. Call me. Let us be the expert, expert and let us do the work for you to sell these loans and get them qualified. Yeah, you know, not only do, our, do we have RI, real intelligence, we have really professional account executives, right? And they will represent, and you can see just not just Al and Annie, but all of them across the country are really professional and will present on your behalf. Like Annie says, they don't say anything about Angel Oak. They're just going to say, you know, we've had Danielle ask a lot of great questions here. I'm going to go in there. Hey, I'm just one of Danielle's investors. Danielle has access to other investors, but I'm just one of them. And I'm just here to educate and inform you about the products that Danielle has access to, not that Angel Oak has, it's Danielle. It's all about Danielle. We're driving that conversation back to Danielle. So, you know, I kind of, sometimes I, I get, uh, no one takes, not that many people take us up on it, but when we do then they are so powerful. And if you get 12 realtors in a room, the odds are you're going to get one of their loans because 9% of the loans we close our realtors. So and I know Al, you do a ton of these. Mm -hmm. uh, so I know we're getting near the top. Of, anything else to add, Al, regarding marketing? Feel free. I was just going to say when I when I do the realtor presentations, I lead in with the 1099 because, like you said, how are the realtors paid? Mm -hmm. 1099. It gets their attention. If that doesn't get their attention, when you get to the DSCR, one of the first three questions I get from realtors is, "Can I use this product myself?" The answer is yes. So they're looking at properties all day. They want to buy them too. Before we go into some closing, a couple of public service. Uh, this is being recorded. If we didn't get to any of your questions we or some of your questions, we will get your account executive to reach out to you to answer those questions. We do have our next, as Al just mentioned, our debt service coverage ratio deep product dive is on June 8th at noon central time. So uh, Al, anything in closing you want to share? Um, yeah, just one very simple thing. If you want to be an expert at non-QM, the only thing that you really need to know is my phone number. 
or your account executive's phone number. <laughs> call us. I mean, we can we can start you from the first phone call you get where you say, I'm not sure what to do with this guy. Well, what you do with them is you call me. That's great, Al. You know, we love scenarios. That's how it starts, right? That's another yeah. thing. That's an Eric Morganism, an Eric Morganism, or whatever we want to call it. That's we love scenarios. That's what gets the ball rolling. And then Annie, in closing, take it away. Uh, well, first of all, thank you so much for joining us all today because it's great to see so many people that have never done a bank statement loan and wanting to learn how to use them because this will truly open a door for you in the future. I, I've seen it happen with loan officers that come to us and learn this program and they start doing the marketing, they stay with the marketing and how their business transitions over the years. And one thing I will say about these borrowers is they are loyal to you and they are dedicated to you because a lot of these borrowers have been turned down before. And so sometimes they're deflated. So, for example, you know, I had a loan officer do a bank statement borrower, and he owned, you know, he had 30 employees at his company. And so she got referrals from him for a lot of his employees, and they were simple, conventional FHA loans. They were able to do, you know, cakewalk. But none of those referrals would have never come if they didn't take the time to work with that bank statement borrower and do that loan for them. And then these bar borrowers are the very loyal. You know, I've had brokers now where we're doing the fifth or sixth loan for the same borrower because <laughs> bank statement borrowers stay bank statement borrowers. You know, one of one of the best things from one of my top L L brokers, and I love what he says, he goes, you have two choices. He goes, you can take your down payment and pay your taxes, or you can actually use a down payment for the loan. So these borrowers stay bank statement borrowers. And so, and what's fun about working, you know, with non-QM loans all over, and especially the bank students borrowers, is they are truly grateful. Um, you know, one of the dreams, you know, one, one of the biggest milestones of reaching the American dream is home ownership. And we still do a lot of first-time home buyers on this program. And so just last week, I closed the loan for a bank statement borrower, first-time home buyer, young kid, you know, had just started his business, three to four years into his business. They had their first child. And it meant the world for them to be able to qualify for this loan when they had been turned down. And so my loan officers, you know, they, you know, contacted me after the signing and they just said, you know, thank you so much for what you did. Um, it was definitely a harder loan to get through. You know, thank you. Um, you know, they were, they were crying at the signing. You know, they, they didn't have this option before. And so it really, it truly is remarkable what we're able to do, especially in this industry where it can get very transactional. And at the end of the day, we have to remember that these are individuals and we're literally changing their lives and we're making their goals and their dreams come true. And so that's what inspires me every day to go out there and do what we do. Yeah, can't say it any better than that, Annie. Uh, so Eddie, this is being recorded. There's a brief survey if you want to take it afterwards, but I'm, I'm kind of, ruining what Annie just closed on. It's just great. I love the way you put that, Annie. Uh, but for all of you on this call, thank you for your time today. For those of you who have closed loans with Angel Oak, we really do appreciate your business. For those who have not, please give us a shot. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thank you, everyone. Al, Annie, you guys are truly professional. Appreciate you guys every day. Thank you. Thank you. Hold on.